Hello everybody! Today we are going to show you how to set up your brand new Wacom One with Clip Studio Paint. When you first open Clip Studio Paint, you might be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of windows and tabs are there. But don't worry, this is what we are going to help you with. So first of all, look at this color mixing palette that is sitting dead right in the middle and drag it, click and drag, and then put them to the bottom right. See where that red bar is showing up and release? That is going to snag the window right into the panel. And then the next step, we are going to look for the brush size tab that is on your left side. Click on the little sandwich menu here and select high brush size palette. We're going to select the second tab on the bottom left next to the color wheel. And do the same thing again. Select the sandwich menu and high color set palette. And we're going to do this rinse and repeat for a million steps until we hide everything. Yes, you heard me right. We're going to hide everything right now except for a few palettes. So let's select Color History 2, High Color History Palette. Hide again. Hide again. And then move to the top right next to the navigator. Hide again. Now we are going to drag this layer palette right to the left of layer property where the red bar is showing up again. Just put them there. Now we're going to look for more tabs and hide them. Since this process can take quite a bit of time, using the Wacom One Pen to navigate on the surface and clicking and dragging panels can really help speed things up. Even these little menus right here, expand them and hide them all. But fear not, they didn't disappear because you can go under window and see all of the palettes here. Once you start becoming more and more familiar with Clip Studio Paint, you can go in here and reactivate the palettes so they didn't just get erased out of the existence, they are still there. We can drag the bar at any time if you need the panel to be bigger or if you need the panel to be smaller. This is very flexible. And once you're happy with the look of your palettes, we'll go to Window workspace, register workspace, and type in the name for your workspace. For this case, we will call it clean, very clean. And hit OK. So now that your workspace is registered, you can see that if we reset to default, yes. It's going to go back to how it was before when you first opened the software. But if you reload the one that you just registered, it is going to go back to the ones that we just cleaned up together. On the very left is the toolbar. The toolbar is conveniently divided into three groups using these little dividers. The first group are the utilities, and these include tools such as the object tool, selection, magic wand, or the eyedropper. The second groups are the drawing and painting tools. These include the pen, pencil, brushes, decorations, or blend, liquify. The last group are the workspace flow tools. And these include things such as fill, paneling tools, rulers, speech bubbles, and vector manipulation. 
And on the bottom, you have the color swatches, which we will cover in another video. Whenever you select a tool, brushes, for example, or B on your keyboard, you will see a list of brushes show up in your subtool palette. In the subtool palette, there are different tabs by default, thick paint, India ink, and watercolor. And whenever you have a tool selected, you will see in the tool property palette, there are a list of attributes that are associated with each brush. These are all entirely customizable, including which brushes go into which folder or tab, or which attribute shows up for which brush. The color palette is very straightforward. You select a color and you will paint, draw, fill with that color. We will go a little bit more in depth with this in another video. The top right is your navigator. You can use the navigator to move around the canvas very easily, zoom in and out, rotate the canvas, or confront your biggest fear in digital art, flipping the canvas. If you follow the suggestion from before, you should have the layer panel or the layer property left from before. The layer panel, I can go on hours and hours and talk about what each button does, but that can be very overwhelming. So let's just focus on the new layer, delete layer, layer mode, and the opacity. Those are really the only things that you need to understand when you first begin. And that's it for the basics for the interface. I try to keep things very simple because if I really want to get into it, we can spend hours here. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and this was helpful to you.